Josh, where's where's the campsite? It's coming up just ahead over there. Are you scared of the dark? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But I'm with my friends. I'm okay. <laughs> Field of Geeks presents The Super Super Unknown I'm Josh I'm Juan And I'm Dave Coming at you live from our bunkers Yes Quarantine has how's begun. The, how's the struggle, guys? It's actually not that bad for me. I, I'm being honest with people. Like, only like 90% of my life has really changed because I don't really. I'm just not going to restaurants and bars. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm really doing the same thing. Other than uh, less work, more money. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's a, that's a useful thing. Yeah. Uh, got on unemployment. Oh, yeah. Great. And that uh, tripled my pay, basically. Fantastic. <laughs> I know. It's, uh, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Oh, I'm not complaining. No, I'm, I'm just saying. It's just like, like, wait a minute. I'm making more now than I was before. <laughs> yeah, I do <laughs> I mean, that should, be a fun, did it. that should be an episode of the, the Super Unknown, is how the hell you can make more on unemployment. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I got my Orange Man check. I got my little stimulus Orange Man check. So. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> little, like that. Your little orangutan check? Yeah. <laughs> and I got my tangerine check. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, we're stimulated. waiting, dude. Trump has yeah. stimulated you. Hey, I, <laughs> hey, the way to win me over with things is with money. That helps. Yeah, I'm yeah. not. That's what he's hoping for. That's all I'm saying. I ain't got nothing else to say with that. I'm just saying, want to get on my good side, offer me some money. I know, right? That could be anybody. Exactly. That could be a five-year-old it's kid. It's a huge payout, huge, fantastic payout, huge. Uh, tremendous, yeah, I mean, I, tremendous. People tremendous. don't think about the long-term effects when they're receiving money. They think about the now. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we're all. I think we're all doing pretty well so far. I don't know. How about you, Dave? <clears throat> yeah, I'm kind of in the same boat as uh, as Juan. Yeah, you know it's uh, it's bizarre. I mean, I um, yeah. Well, I mean, I am still working full time. We've actually been pretty busy. Um, Good. Yeah, but it's That's you know you got, I kind of signed up for these uh, these different programs where it's like um, you get like forgivable as a small business you can get forgivable loans if you use them for uh, payroll. Nice. So it's like, okay, <laughs> I'll pay him myself. <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, nice. you know, so like, yeah, so like, it's funny though. They were like, originally they rolled it out and then you like, oh, you can get up to 25000 And then they immediately ran through all that money. So they're like, oh, no, no. When we said 25000 we made it 1000 for every employee they got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like how about how's five dollars sound and a, and a McDonald's coupon? There you go. Right. It's like what's this? There you go. What's this fucking <laughs> orange kind of smear all over it? Oh yeah. Yeah, I I got my yeah. I think we all I think we all got our check at the same time, didn't we? Like was it Thursday. That's when I got mine. I think. I think I got mine on Wednesday. I think I have yet to get yeah. my stimulus check. Oh really? Yeah. He's Canadian. Maybe because, remember? yeah, is that why he's like that's Canadian? Probably, that's probably not, yeah. getting a check. not getting a check. Are you sure, Dave? Dollar. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's uh, you know they're like oh you're here just just trying to collect off of uh, 
collect uh, all this unemployment and uh, benefits from us. Like, I'm a citizen. <laughs> uh, likely Did, story. I think, uh, I think Trudeau will do a publisher's clearinghouse visit to your front door. <laughs> hey, with him and his big giant check. <laughs> oh, yeah. With Ed Keep McMahon. The <laughs> yeah, I'll reanimate his corpse and bring him wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I never did this. You covered yeah, it in that. Did, did you be on the show, Ed? This is really fascinating. Guys, we got a zombie here. <laughs> <laughs> Zombies. Zombies. You know, and well, I, I uh, think you got all those kind of protesters in like Michigan and shit. Um, yeah. You know, and I don't know what they're doing. They're just standing there with their guns. I'm like, what are you guys doing? You know, like you under do you um, understand? No, they what don't. The pathogen actually looks like I, apparently not because you They're have guns. It. It's like, what are you gonna shoot it? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna you gonna you gonna shoot the coronavirus? Like, come on, Jesus! Get down, pow, pow. pow. They, yeah, they've watched so many Aspen movies in their isolation. They they're like, I, I gotta get out there and do it uh, myself. Well, they probably saw a picture of it, and they're like, well, I can. I saw it on the news. You know, it's this big brown thing with, like, little things that stick off of it. If I see that floating around, I'll just shoot it. Jesus. Get your, get your duck called, Carl. Yeah. Get your coronavirus call. You know what? <laughs> I went back and watched a movie last night that I haven't seen in a while, and it's actually similar to the coronavirus. That Bird Box movie on Netflix. Oh, I haven't oh, seen that. Shit. I need to see that. Yeah. Really? Okay. Everyone was, like, stuck inside? Yeah, they all had to stay inside and stuff, and you go outside, you'll, you'll run into trouble. I, I don't want to give it away for Josh, but that simplifies it. And so I was just like, really? holy shit. Sorry. I was like, oh, man, like, uh, I, I, can, I can identify with this really well <laughs> currently. Because, you know. Yeah, it really, uh, all of this isolation really put us into the mindsets of those films we've seen for years. And I think it really hits the harder to home, even though it's a lot of fictional elements, obviously. But remember uh, Outbreak? That's on Netflix. I remember watching that back in the day. And Contagion's a popular one right now. People are trying to find and watch. Oh, yeah. Contagion was great because uh, what's her face? The, um, when, it, Paltrow? when it Paltrow gets taken out right at the beginning. Yes, I like this movie already. <laughs> My goop. Is that, is that her site, Goop? Or... Yeah, Whatever goop. that site is, full of BS. She's Donkey shit. The candle. Donkey <laughs> shit. Donkey shit.com. <laughs> Maybe they'll be getting bailed out. What do you think? I don't know. Oh, okay. Probably. Fuck, <laughs> <laughs> I told you. Donkey talk. shit. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, uh, what's, uh, what's, uh, why you call it that? Like, what's, uh, what's the stuff made out of? Uh, it's uh, made out of donkey shit. <laughs> Five hundred dollars a bar or so. With a splash of my vagina. Right. <laughs> got those candles. Got those damn candles. Donkey shit. So crazy. So crazy. Is it, again, unknown things, right? Unknown. So, uh, what, what are the topics we got for today? Well, like last time, we each brought a topic to the table, and I thought it went pretty well, so I thought we'd try that this time as well. And, of course, yeah. Dave, you weren't with us last time, but welcome back. Um, Thank you. For uh, dead. Good to have everyone together again. Shout so, out to Cousin yeah. Mitch, by the way. Shout out to Cousin Mitch. Yeah. Filling in. Yeah. <laughs> Where Mitch is Mitch? Guest last time. What's that? Where is Mitch? Where is he? We need Mitch. Yes. He's I like to call him Cousin Mitch. Cousin Mitch. <laughs> Cousin Mitch. He's, uh, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, I think he's uh, out shopping right now. I just got off the phone with him. We recorded uh, Field of Geeks. and Yeah, I should have just uh, brought him all over. Last time went really well, and thanks to Mitch. And, yeah, I had a great time. So I thought we would do that again. And if it, uh, if it's successful enough and we all like it, we can just keep the format up. Um, of course, we can always go back to one-topic shows, but uh, kind of, you know, freshes things up a little bit, and we all bring something to the table. So, anyway, with that said, uh, who would like to share first what they brought? 
my topic is basically um, history. So basically, it's like uh, it's titled "History Over 100 Years Ago." Artists were uh, asked to depict the year 2000. These were the results. Uh, was a uh, this was published on March 30th, 2020. And basically, it was um, these crazy images were created by French artist uh, Jean-Marc Cote. I like that name, Cote. Okay. And a few other. Back in 1899, 1900, 1901, and 1910. So these images that they had were of what they thought the year 2000 would be like and stuff like that. In these pictures, they have, like, uh, pictures of uh, people, like, on these flying devices. Now, uh, the one thing I messed up on is I didn't do enough research on when the Wright brothers came up with the the airplane. I don't know what year that was. Wasn't that in, like, the 1930s? Am I? Uh, I think it was... I don't, I was in the 1800s. Might have been 1800s. But I, I, I did. Wa- I did. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I did look at uh, some of those pictures too, and yeah, there's a lot of that uh, inspiration in there from the Wright brothers. Tech look like. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was some interesting pics. Uh, they were showing like uh, children in, in school, and they had like ear devices. And then 1904 and, uh, was... to 1905, by the way. Ooh, What's that? yes. Yeah, 1904. He did the research. 1904 1905. to 1905 they, uh, was when the Wright Brothers invented the plane. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. So this, and then I started off in, uh, remember, this is 1899. Uh, so the wow. last, the, the last one was, so 18, 1899 to, um, let's see, to 1900, and then 1901, and then 1910. So those are the years they, they did these pictures. Um, obviously, uh, the people out there that are listening, feel free to check out the uh, Super Unknown webpage. It's got all these images, all the pictures. Uh, just sends you right to a link of it. There are some, <laughs> some interesting things they thought, but everyone has like a flying machine. <laughs> yeah. It seems like they were really like they would like put out you know home fires with with a with flying machines and. Uh, they also did racing in the water, like on, on like sharks or something. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> so they had a lot of events, like they were playing croquet underwater. Yeah. water. And um, let me say this ahead of time, and just so you guys know, ahead of time, there is a picture that's kind of racist. Probably by definition, <laughs> racist. So really. So, Oh yeah, there's one where uh, well, yeah, like I flying. guess so. Yeah, there's. I mean, it's 1899. I I, I understand the yeah. time period. So right, right. There, it's like one of the guys are flying a plane, and it looks like it's in some kind of African village, and the images of the Africans is that traditional kind of uh, oh minstrel look. So just give you guys a heads up. And somebody's out okay. there, and they just look it up, and they're like, "Holy smoke!" Yeah. That's whoops. Yeah, that's 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 pure racism. It's good old go get old fashioned racism. So. <laughs> <Good> old fashioned. <laughs> they don't make it like that anymore. Now. It's subtle now. For a little just, bit of good old fashioned racism. There's good, a headline uh, for you: racist uh, depictions of the future. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you go. Just one. I've only saw one pick, you know. But I was like, that's yeah, right. Oh, that's black people. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, my God. God. That's terrible. <laughs> but well, uh, other than that, it was just cool stuff. Like, yeah, they're well, actually like, kind of dead on. Yeah, some things they definitely were. Some things I'm like, I would still love to have that technology. I think there's like a, maybe a washing machine that like folds and stuff. There's all kinds of crazy stuff they uh, came up with. It, it almost seems like the whole... Like, Da Vinci was an inspiration, I guess you would say, over the Wright brothers if they hadn't done anything yet. Because, you know, there's a lot mm-hmm. of, you know, I don't know if you've seen the Da Vinci drawings of him. He was obsessed, I think, with flight. I mean, he, he did construct something, some device that, I don't know if he ever tested it, but it, it kind of looks like some of that's from 
like Da Vinci's ideas. And then, yeah, the whole uh, ocean, you know, mammals and all that stuff, it makes you wonder if they thought we cracked the code on how to communicate with them and we, like, it coexisted, you know, we could, like, ride on them and stuff, like, off the name or something. There's yeah, probably I mean, a lot of LSD back then and coke, who knows. Oh. oh. They, they had... Uh, you think LSD was there? Existed at the I don't know. Who knows? I mean, you know, I'm sure a lot of artists were... Peyote. Like, Peyote. Eating, eating dirt and shit, I don't know. And, and, I mean, Mary Jane. <laughs> and Mary Jane had probably been there forever, you know, so, like... Yeah, they uh, find their way. Yeah, I mean, I think like uh, <clears throat> even in like uh, Sherlock Holmes, his yeah, even in like the books, he did like uh, like a lot of cocaine, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and maybe opium. Maybe, maybe? Yeah, opium. Yeah, opium was yeah. big in those times. Um, yeah, absence and that. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I need to study Sherlock Holmes. Now, oh, dude, I, I was a huge fan. A, oh, go ahead, yeah. Uh, Sherlock Holmes? It, was he, is that just a fictional character? Is he really a person that exists? No, he's fictional. He's fictional. Oh, okay. okay. He originally started out as a comic book or a comic uh, strip in the papers. <coughs> and then he got, he, him and uh, Moriarty went off of um, the waterfall. They were fighting yeah, the edge of a waterfall and then they uh, there was a big uproar that they had killed off the character so he started writing them into uh, novels yeah Sir Arthur Conan Doyle I think was his name yeah. and he he was tired of the character I think that's why he killed him off and then there was like public outcry but uh, you know we've always been as a culture obsessed I think with Sherlock Holmes I definitely was as a kid and when I first you know because when you're a kid obviously most drugs are bad, right? You get not thrown at you as a kid repeatedly, like drugs are bad, drugs are bad. When my uncle actually told me like, do you know Sherlock actually did drugs? I was kind of like, you know, you know, bummed out by that. But I get it for the, <laughs> the time period, you know, that like all that shit was pretty normal and unknown of what it could do. And so, yeah. yeah. I mean, but anyway, yeah. I'll... Do you know anybody named Sherlock? I've never met anyone named Sherlock. That's an unusual name. Like, no. I've never known a Sherlock. Sherlock Jackson, I think, Sherlock Smith. I don't know. Do you think Do you think uh, uh, it would be uh, <laughs> accepted well on the playground, you know? Would, would a kid get picked on, or would he be kind of like, oh, you're cool? Get out of here, Sherlock. I think or he said something busy. super obvious, and they're like, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right. That's the only name is Bane. Name. Yeah. Yeah, Mine, like Minecraft. Home, Minecraft is his brother's name. That's kind of a cool name. It's like Microsoft. Uh, Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, there's a whole, whole lineage of there, but yeah, who knows? I mean, I've seen yeah, the, a lot of these art drawings are they're really fascinating. Um, yeah, it's crazy to, to see what they thought because even even uh, like when I was growing up. You know, I would watch these shows, like, you know, because 2000 was approaching, it was a big deal. I was actually <clears> class of 2000. We got t-shirts in kindergarten, I still remember. I watched the television programs as I was getting older. I thought for sure I'd be in a flying car for my first car. And, yeah, it was very wrong. <laughs> the good thing no, is, we, we, we don't have to have pilot license. We kill each other more. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I wouldn't want to fly with these people no. on Earth. Like, you know, especially like right now, you go pick up a margarita to go, and you decide, hey, I can have a few sips, and you just get an OWI into, like, in the air and stuff. Man, come on! Like, you literally <laughs> run into someone's house. <laughs> we just have to be automated. I, there's no way. I oh, mean, yeah. like AI controlled. It's, it's, yeah. it just makes no sense to me. Like uh, otherwise, like precision precision operation has to be the key in humanity. You know, like, some can do it. <laughs> Uh -huh. a rare, a rare few. <laughs> but yeah, that's, yeah, that 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 was actually really good. Uh, yeah, totally. Everyone should go check that out. That a lot of some things, yeah, th some things were close to what we get ended up getting. Um, it, there actually was. I do remember one image. There was people talking to 
you know, friends or loved ones over. It looked like a smartphone, but it was, um, you know, it was, you know, like it, the smartphone was made that time period. But it had a screen on it, and they were talking to them. And oddly enough, it was like some people at a table, and they weren't looking at each other. They were looking at their devices. So they kind of predicted that, you know, I'd say. <laughs> we're all kind of like that now. Well, it says, it says uh, quite accurate vision of the current area today, including mm-hmm. farming machines, robotic oh, equipment, cool. and yep. flying machines. We're not riding giant seahorses yet. Although, it doesn't look like... <laughs> Damn it. Well, speak for yourself. <laughs> I well, just had some opium. I'm riding one right now. <laughs> Lucky. Lucky. <laughs> My teeth hurt. Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, they have some interesting deals. The underwater stuff is the stuff that was really interesting because I'm just like... They really had an idea to investigate, you know, the deep blue sea and just see, and like, I guess, build homes and fortresses and labs. I don't know. I mean, uh, they, they definitely a, reach. They they reach for the possibility, and that's just that's something that we still. I mean, you know, we talk about all this exploration outside of Earth, but we still have not explored all there is of the ocean and its inhabitants, and yeah, that's. That's something we still have to uh, figure out, I guess, if we want to. I don't really want to have dinner with the shark, because I'll probably be dinner, but, you know, I don't know. Just give a call to Aquaman. We'll figure it out. Yeah. He's, he's from Iowa. Iowa. He's, he's from Iowa. He's from Iowa. There you go. There you go. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that was, that's a great topic, Juan. Thanks. So we're gonna go on a we're gonna go on a time machine, but not that far back as like you know, a hundred years. Back in uh, we're going back to ninety four here. This is out in California. Gloria Ramirez, back in ninety four, goes to the hospital with a regular heartbeat. She goes into the ER and they try to use a defibrillator to kind of even it out. And so as they're doing it. Uh, somebody, one of the um, one of the attending physicians or medical staff, noticed that she's got this oily sheen all over her body, and this uh, fruity garlic smell on her breath. Right. So mm-hmm. huh. they're kind of like, "What's going on here?" Then it gets weird. So they <laughs> they do a blood test. Right. One of the one of the nurses does a blood test. And it starts giving off this strange chemical smell. And when they look at the um, when they look at the blood, it has these um, little pale kind of particles floating in the blood. This is when the first nurse collapses. Yeah, she starts claiming that her face is burning, and then she collapses. Then the nurse did. Yeah, one of the attending nurses. Mm. Then there's yeah. another nurse. Uh, Sounds like a who, sci-fi horror. <laughs> yeah, right? Then this other nurse passes out, claiming she's having problems breathing. Then the respiratory therapist faints. Um, and then the he, this large group of uh, staff claims they feel ill. Right? So um, it's actually... What was it? Hang on, let me check on it. Yeah, so 23 of the 37 people in the ER claim that they're ill. What? Yeah, so they so they evacuate the hospital. So then Gloria, right, the one who came into the hospital, dies. And they put the, uh, and then they move the body to isolation, right? So there's two nurses that move her into this isolation, into isolation at the hospital. The nurse who moves her, uh, the one nurse who moves her, Become, begins to vomit and feels a burning sensation and can't breathe and is hospitalized for 10 days. The other one, it's actually worse, the other nurse goes into intensive care where she, uh, um, where her bones begin to die. She's got what? some kind of, yeah, so she contracts some kind of necrosis. Um, and Holy so shit. her bones don't get enough blood and she's, they start to die. So she's, Actually, has to use crutches for a month, like uh, for months after. So after this, about after two hours, the has- hazmat team arrives. 
and they don't find any 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 chemicals in the air. So they leave the body in isolation, and they actually build out this um, self-contained little um, uh, part of the part of the uh, hospital. So in this airtight room, they do an autopsy <clears throat> with their hazmat suits on. They can't really find anything out of out of the ordinary. So they rule the uh, the official death as cardiac dysrhythmia caused by kidney failure brought on. Uh, by her cervical cancer. Right? But the thing is, it's like, so what the hell is going on? Like, she's she's got, like, this chemical smell coming from her blood. She's, like, um, all the medical staff's, like, you know, affected by this. People are puking, passing out. This one woman's, like, got some kind of necrosis of the bones. Um, here's some theories. The California Department of Health comes and says, oh, it was a case of mass hysteria. Right. So I don't know what you, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what you guys think. Um, I think Ebola. Sounds like a really <laughs> case of Ebola, man. I don't know. Like, that's wild. Sounds like something out of a movie, to be honest with you. I'm like, yeah, they actually I want to know uh, the next scene. They did an <laughs> X-Files episode based on this. Oh, they did? The X-Files? Yeah. And then, so, oh, Livermore Labs over in California, I think, did uh, suggested that they found high cases of dimethyl sulfane uh, during the autopsy. So what they suggested is that she might have used this um, gel, this DMSO gel. <coughs> um, excuse me. <coughs> it's not. Uh, it's not Corona, by the way. <laughs> I think it's allergies or something. So they suggested that she use this G, uh, GS, DMSO gel uh, for her, um, it's an anti-inflammatory for her cancer pains. So this would, this would account for the garlicky smell and the oily sheen on her body. They also proved that DSMO, the, the, uh, the anti-inflammatory gel, also when it's combined with, uh, it's one oxygen atom away from dimethyl sulfone, sulfone, which they found in the excess on the autopsy. And then they proved that when used with a ventilator that kind of pumps in oxygen, it caused these little white crystals uh, in excess. So when they were, they were saying then what, when they put like kind of the respirator mask on <clears throat> and they were feeding her oxygen, they fed this um, DSMO and, and then in excess, then it created these little white crystals. So they're like, this might have been little kind of particles in her blood. Then it was suggested that if the dimethyl sulfane was broken down um, during, you know, while using the defibrillator, it could connect, it could then bond with natural sulfates in the body, which then could create dimethyl sulfate, which is actually a toxic chemical. Um, and can do damage to the heart, liver, and kidneys. Can also cause mm. paralysis, delirium, and convulsions, similar to what happened with the staff. Is that does that scientifically help explain the like white particles in the blood? I guess. Yeah. So that's what they're saying. Effect. Is that you know mm. that would have you know kind of um, I guess the the the, the uh, the oily sheen and the kind of garlicky smell would have been from the gel, the anti-inflammatory gel. So yeah, so they were saying that, you know, if it, if it gets too much oxygen, it can crystallize. And so that they were saying that was partially what could have happened. And then the defibrillator could have broken it down, the dicephalate, you know, dicephalate, sulfone, and then called, you know, made it into sulfate. But problem is, is they were never able to create this, um, they were never able to recreate that in the lab. What? Yeah. It's kind of like a lightning in a bottle, it's just like something they can't harness. Like, it just, the right <coughs> elements had to be introduced to make this happen, right? I mean, right. Now, there's another theory, though, and it comes from Gloria's family, who says... The hospital was a mess, and it was largely a cover-up. So this happened in 94, 
right? In 91, there was a case for those uh, nurses hospitalized due to a poisonous gas leak in the hospital. And then huh. in 93, there was a, uh, there was somebody testing the air quality and they found sewage gas in the ER. Oh. Huh. Yeah. And so then. This is all the same hospital? Yeah, all the same hospital, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Um, and then I guess. Every scenario. Yeah. And then the coroner said, uh, Gloria had, um, when the, the coroner who did the autopsy originally said Gloria hadn't died of natural causes. But then, and then, after, you know, I guess I'm assuming he was talked to, he said she did die of natural causes. And then it's crazy. There was a medical examiner um, who was working on Gloria's case and then committed suicide one month into the case. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, so. Holy shit. That's crazy, right? Oh my god, yeah, that's like a whole rabbit hole of uh, government conspiracy. <laughs> Agent Orange and all shit. Oh man. Or uh, yeah. why do they The old uh, the old dying while they're investigating something cliche. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's like you don't they don't want anybody they know, so just make it uh, look like a suicide. So Joker possibly toxic what, gas. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> so, basically, the the elements happened, and then the sewer gas was on top of that. And that's probably what perhaps killed her, and everyone gets got infected from. I mean, maybe that would make sense if they couldn't recreate it, and the sewer gas isn't a hundred percent, you know, factor. Uh, well, what? yeah. So, I mean, so you got the Department of Health saying it was mass hysteria. You got. Hmm. Um, this lab saying, you know, there's all these kind of unique kind of, you know, it's like this set of circumstances that just kind of perfectly matched up and resulted in this. And then you have um, the family saying, uh, no, you know, the, the hospital's a freaking mess and there's been poisonous gases leaking in, you know, and it's the hospital's not just trying to cover up. And the family knows this because she was going to this hospital for treatment? Is that how they know the history? Or Oh, no, I think it would be a public record, right? Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So the family actually huh. had to dig into this? Yeah, I think they've uh, they've kind of looked wow. into it. I right. think they, they, oh, yeah, sued, I think they, they wanted... sued. They sued them for yeah, wrongful okay. death. Right, that makes sense then. Yeah, they had their investigators look into things and... Huh. Have they... Have they said anything about any other similar cases in history, past, future, or present? Like anything that's been similar to what happened in that particular situation? I, no, I didn't, I didn't really get into it that far. Oh, okay, well, you I said they weren't able to stuff. recreate. Yeah, I think they, you said they weren't able to recreate what happened, right? Yeah, like they weren't, they said it, it's a possibility, but they were never able mm. to to kind of um, for sure say, yeah, we've recreated the circumstances. Yeah, I mean, it's possible it could have happened elsewhere, too, and maybe it was covered up better. You know, people were paid off, and who knows. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, another, another rabbit hole into not trusting uh, what you're told. Jesus. That's really bizarre. <laughs> That's crazy. Isn't it, though? If, um, yeah, do we, do we know if uh, these doctors recovered fully or if uh, they... Uh, are still struggling with this? Uh, yeah. Again, you know what? I uh, I just kind of did some surface level. But, yeah, uh, no, no. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd look into it for sure, and we could do. I yeah. could do like a recap and say, yeah. But that's no, I just a, yeah, uh, I just kind of thought the initial story was kind of cool. Yeah, no, dude, that's totally. I was on the edge of my seat. Like this is so bizarre. Like <laughs> I almost thought it was like. Uh, yeah, like, you know, I just I just watched Chernobyl, that miniseries, like, a few months back, and it, to me it sounded like it was like a radiation buildup that she was emanating to everyone. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. It yeah, just sounds right? like a movie. It does sound like yeah, a movie. Really. It sounds fictional. Yeah, and, uh, like when I hear the when I hear the garlic thing, I'm, I'm go I go with vampires or something like Blake <laughs> or something. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah, weird, Jeez. right? Well, the, the one that really hit me the most was the, the girl with her bones dying. Like, oh my god, I how know. did you fix that? What do you do? And so, Jack, like, calcium or something? Yeah, I no, guess so my question would be is none of their none of their symptoms match the next person to the next. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. No, there was uh, so there was um, they there was several several of the nurses um, were having um, like problems breathing. There mm-hmm. were several of them that said that their faces were kind of had a, had a burning or their skin had a burning sensation. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, as I say, the one, the, the the two of them that actually had to move the body from the kind of place mm. in the ER to that kind of isolated um, kind of quarantine, um, the one vomited and said their face was burning. Um, I think, you know, couldn't breathe. And then the other one, um, yeah, and then she was in, in uh, intensive care for like 10 days. And then the other one uh, was really bad, and she was the one who developed some kind of necrosis of her bone. God. Just from moving her from one, yeah, moving her from one location to the next. So it's basically like you probably have to have good genes, strong DNA to not uh, suffer as much. You know, maybe that is a factor too. The lady with the bone issue, maybe there's a weakness there or something that penetrated or. I you mean, know, you mean attacking a weak point of you already, like something that's already not functioning yeah. at its top capacity. Right. I get that. Basically, that makes sense. This whole thing was, yeah, this whole thing was like a perfect storm, really. You know, all the right elements were introduced to cause this from happening. Do we know, if, um, and I know you did surface level, forgive me, but I'm just curious, um, the hospital still, it's still open to the public? I, I wonder if they fixed that issue. Of course, they'd have to admit to an issue to do it, but it makes you wonder. Like, if, you know, if I break my arm or something, I'm by the hospital, am I going to want to go elsewhere? <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, known as the toxic, the, the toxic woman. Riverside, the California. The toxic woman. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so she, uh, Riverside, California. That's okay. one hell of a title. The toxic woman. They, That's interesting. Yeah, so several hospital workers failed and others uh, fainted and others experienced symptoms such as shortness of breath, muscle spasms. Five five workers required hospitalization, one of them who remained in intensive care for two weeks. Yeah, we should definitely do a follow-up on this, maybe just some interviews with the doctors or something, or unless they were hushed, you know? If, if maybe know, we can do a single topic dead. episode yeah. of that one. Oh, that, sure. that, that, that story Dude. is awesome, Dave. Like I'm yeah, intrigued. Yeah. It's crazy, it's great, bro. Yeah, man. Yeah, that's, it's, like right out of the It movie. sounds like a movie. It sounds like a movie. <laughs> it, could, it could be a movie. Oh, here. Here, here, here. Um, so two months after Maris died, her badly decomposed body was released for independent autopsy and burial. I don't know how I don't know how factual this is because, you know, it's Wikipedia, but um the Ramirez family's pathologist was unable to cause, uh, determine the cause of death because her heart was missing. What? Oh, holy yeah. smoke. This her other awesome. organs were cross-contaminated with fecal matter, and her body was too badly decomposed. Oh. Yeah. Wow, Man, this Lord. is the best story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just Crazy. keep going deeper and deeper into mystery here. Wow. Yeah, they probably, you know what they did? They, they probably took her heart and like sent it to like a research facility to just study the hell out of it. Unless whatever she had in there just ate up everything. Uh, just decomposed it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, wow. Man. Wow. Holy crap! This is this is a good find, Dave. Holy crap! This is <laughs> man. This would be. We got to revisit this for like a one-topic show. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. That one is crazy, man, because it's, it's got layers it's like an onion. Like an onion. <laughs> like, a, like a clove of garlic. <laughs> like a clove of garlic. <laughs> it's got so many Onions pieces. and garlic. Yeah. Yeah, so there you go. We should, like, wow. get in contact with one of these doctors. Maybe they'll call us through a payphone and use aliases, and then, I gotta go, I gotta go, click. Holy shit, man, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Yeah, it is. I've never, uh, I've never heard go. anything like that before. 
So if you get hurt and you're nearby this hospital, um, I would just say walk it off or walk to the next hospital. <laughs> drag, drag your severed limb to Mercy or something nearby. Mm. Holy crap. Uh-uh. That's wild. Because it would really actually, the weird thing is mm. that I would actually trade coronavirus for that. Like, <laughs> that's nuts. Mm. That's nuts. Yeah, that I've never heard crazy. a story like that. I thought it was like well, something I'd... like fictional. You can't I mean, have all say, that. Uh, right. Not to say the, you know, COVID-19 is not already bad, but imagine something like this on, a, on the same scale, you know, like, but it, it does all these. And I guess you could say the virus right now does different things to different people. Some lose taste, smell, some develop more serious, like, respiratory issues. But, yeah, like, something like this, like, could you imagine that sweeping the, the whole world? Like, bones dying? Like, oh, my God, that's just frightening as hell. Like, I would just check out, man. I'd be like, you know what? I'm just going to live in my bunker, and, uh, yeah, I don't need to get out anymore. It was a good life. We'll just uh, we'll play cards till I die. I don't know, something like that. Marbles, whatever. <laughs> whatever that's games crazy. I got. <laughs> Well, I mean, that that particular disease sounds like the definition for social distancing. Like, you, know, <laughs> you don't want to be near that person at all. No, like, yeah. You'll pass out. Yeah. Your bones will yeah, break really. down or something. That's My God. wild. That is wild. Yeah, we definitely got to revisit that and just hope, dig deeper and find, I'm sure there's so much might, other might to make that the next episode right there. So. There you go. Follow-up episode. Hopefully we'll be able to get back together again and do that. Man, oh, that's yeah. good. That was that's a good, good story. What you got, Josh? Big. <laughs> what I got? Oh, God. Well, um, uh, thanks, for, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, no. Um. <laughs> you know what? It reminds me of my band days where you'll see, like, a, like a band go on stage. <laughs> yeah. And... And, like, you don't know who they are, and they just massacre it. They just, yeah. like, they kill it. And, like, the main attraction band is just, like, uh, okay, uh, let's... They just, they just, look, they just look at each other, it's like, it's not too late to leave, is it? We can, we can just get on the uh, bus, right? We can just get on the bus, right? You can't talk that. It's no. like, your story is, like... I won't, uh, yeah. I won't, I won't definitely not be able to top that. Um, I guess we'll just we'll bring it to a, a, a gradual close, if you will. You know, just a nice, nice send off, maybe. I don't, know. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to sell this thing bigger than it is. Um, no, it, what I've got, it's it's pretty fascinating. I think dark side of the moon telescope. I um, dig topic it. Off our, yeah, off our web page or um, Facebook page. NIAC, Innovative Advanced Concepts Program, is funded by NASA. They propose out they propose out of the box ideas, you know, very like big concepts, kind of change the possible ideas. So one of the ideas proposed was a lunar crater radio telescope, LCRT for short, and it was proposed by a roboticist. And uh, hmm. they their goal is to build this telescope in a natural crater of the moon on its far side. So it, it could unlock great mystery, you know, dating back to the early days of the cosmos. They're talking like 13.8 billion years ago, exploring that. Uh, the project was awarded phase one status, which is $120,000 to move it forward. The next step is to have a convincing proposal to get to phases two and three. And then phase, phase one explores the feasibility, the mechanical design, finding a suitable moon crater to use, and then, of course, performance comparison with other ideas that the uh, program came up with. So it, it would be an ultra-long wavelength, and it would be projected by the Earth-based forces, like radio interference and noise. The moon itself would act as a physical shield. And you can start hmm. this telescope, they would use uh, dual-axle robots, and they would be deployed on the moon, they would string up and suspend it and anchor this mesh material. And they've already been tested for tougher terrains, but given a zero gravity situation, I'm not sure if 
I don't know how they would weigh it down or, or you know, how that would work exactly. Probably some thrusters. It's going to take some time, basically. This is just an idea a stage. It's going to it's going to probably be many years before they can get um, if if it gets the other phases. That is, you know, if it's if it's uh, feasible, of course. Personally, uh, you know, I, I think this is really fascinating, pretty cool. A lot still needs to be developed, of course, for it to uh, see the light of day. But what do you guys feel? Do you feel like this is an awesome thing, or is it kind of scary? You know, what it it could unlock the mysteries. I, I think it's kind of awesome. I'm like I'm intrigued yeah. by it. You know, anytime sure. they're investigating like the moon or other planets or anything like that, I'm always intrigued with stuff like that. Right. I mean, they right. pull it off. I'm, I'm, I'm like, kudos, man. That's, I think that's a good thing. Hi, right, man. You're in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was easy. All right. Well, let's go, guys. <laughs> no, but like, are, are you guys, are you guys terrified of space? Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm a, I'm a. I'm a fan of space, but it terrifies me too. Of course, I've never flown before, so that might also be a factor. But just the you've you know, never the black ones of it. No, he's never no. flown before. You didn't know that, Dave? Yeah, no. it's, it's the most amazing thing ever. What the? It's a How super become... unknown thing. It is. You know what? We're gonna have to find like a Comic Con or something and get Josh on the plane. If you're familiar with the A team, you're gonna have to knock me out like B A because I just I don't know. If yeah, I'm just get, get me super B A and Rock. I could never get on the plane. Just get oh, me they to the plane. They give you booze. They give you booze. Yeah, that'd be fine. I'd get to a stage where I'm like, well, get I'll tell you what, guys. Here, here's what we're gonna do. After this whole thing, uh, this whole kind of thing lifts, um, we're gonna have to take our uh, big orangutan check. <laughs> and uh, and uh, go for like a long weekend in Vegas. Yeah, oh, there you go. It's a direct flight too, isn't it? From oh, here yeah. to Des Moines. Heck yeah, man. Allegiant. <laughs> Is it only one and that flies cheap. there. And it's cheap. They're gonna be dirt cheap for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Researching my topic, you know, I, I, overall I think it's pretty cool, you know, them building this oh, thing yeah. and. Uh, and you know, uh, just hope we don't contact some bad aliens. You know, that's that's the only fear I think most of us have. Like, no bad aliens, just just the good ones. You know, you but, know what? We've already got a bad alien. He's just running the country at the moment. Yeah, he's just gonna rip off his face any minute now and expose <laughs> us to. Uh... And he's just a big <laughs> orangutan in the knee. The orange man coming. The orange man coming. <laughs> oh God! Uh... But yeah, uh, the dark. The dark side of the moon has so much mystery to me, you know, it's just it's because it's some it's a side we never get to see. I think that part scares me a lot. It's like, you know, what the hell's over there? Is it like a big giant party with all these aliens and shit? Yeah. But I mean it's my favorite Pink Floyd album. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that definitely when I was <laughs> I decided I decided to research a little bit of the dark side of the moon, you know. To me it's a big mystery and it still is a mystery after doing some research. But yeah, that album came up for sure. But yeah, it. It can't be seen from Earth. It has several craters. It's actually thicker crust than the near side. And the theories to that are we once had two moons like 4.5 billion years ago, and eventually they merged, and the smaller moon covers the far side. So there's also an impact theory about asteroids hitting the other side. But yeah, the other side has a thicker crust. And actually there's like lava inside the moon. I, I didn't know that. How do they know that? I don't know. I don't you know, know the they, thing, the thing with space, space is, honestly, the thing with space is you can make up there. whatever you want. Right. You can make whatever you want up about space and people will be like, yeah. You know, you can yeah. be like, oh, you know, oh, it's like uh, five billion light years away. There's, uh, you know, there's a planet that looks like a giant ass. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. Yeah, there is. It's like, oh, it's like, who's gonna fact check you? How, how are they gonna fact check you? Well, that's and that's a good point too. That is a good point. Yeah, like the whole billion years it thing. Like yeah. <laughs> but I, yeah. So let, so let, me, me ask, me. let me ask you this though, right? They're talking mm -hmm. about how they find these planets that are so many light years away. So, mm -hmm. can we see faster than the speed of light? Is this what's happening? 
I definitely don't know. You know? Well, I mean, because obviously if they said, okay, well, there's a planet that is a thousand light years away. Okay, well, mm -hmm. you're seeing a version of that planet that was from a thousand years ago. Right, right, yeah, and technically it might not even exist anymore. Right, and they're like, oh, well, it's inhabitable. No, it was inhabitable back then. You know? There's not a Walmart on it. <laughs> <laughs> what if you get there and it's like, hey, what's going on, guys? Like, Phil, right. what are you doing here? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the thing, though. I think there, there's so much mystery in this whole universe we live in, right? And, oh, yeah. you know, whether whether you're religious or you're more into the scientific side, it is funny to me to see, like, a show like Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson. He's traveling oh. to all these other worlds on a, on a basically, uh, on a special effects ship that we're seeing things that aren't actually, they're, they're said to be out there, but they're all, like, images made of, like, you know, special effects and stuff. So it's, I just find that to be funny, too, you know? It's like, all this stuff's really out there, like, not doubting it, but, yeah, it's crazy when all of a sudden they'll, they'll um, They'll find another um, discovery, like another Earth, like just like our Earth, and it has a moon and all that stuff. And perhaps they're just looking at a mirror. I don't know, but yeah, there's all these. You know, is it Pluto that was a planet, then wasn't, and then was again? Wasn't that uh, how that went, or something like that? I, you know, I don't know. I think there's two different camps. One that says it's a one that yeah. says it is a planet, and the other's like, no, it goes right. It's just yeah. a big rock. <laughs> but yeah, but when also when they, they talk about billions of years ago, right? It's like how is that calculated? Like, that just seems boring. If you were immortal, you know, it's like oh my god, I've been here for like two point five billion years. This is so boring, you know. Like it just feels like so much damn time. But I mean, that's what they're kind of saying is two moons we had four point five billion years ago. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a cool theory. Uh, theories are you know, the show's all about unknown and theories kind of propose that you know possibilities obviously and yeah I, I i never heard of this before but i i did look at a video from the science channel on youtube don't know how much uh, credible they are yeah it was some interesting theories but yeah the dark side is always mysterious and even the transformers explored that in that third movie you know which mm -hmm. i don't think is true or was it true we don't know right there might be transformers over there but, well it, it, is, it is like maybe the droids yeah. Like, we put droids on the on the moon, and maybe they did digging, and there's, you know, a process of knowing mm -hmm. what what is yeah. inside the, the core of of the moon right. or any particular planet. I mean, they have similar mm -hmm. things on Mars, supposedly, so uh, yeah. my first thought. Yeah. I'd just be scared to, like, go over to the dark side, <laughs> Star Wars-like, I guess, uh, and you just turn the flashlight on, like, what are you going to see? <laughs> You're probably going to see some crazy shit. I mean, they're just saying there's, there's a bunch of craters. It's just, it's so bizarre. Like, it's something we can't, we don't ever see. But, of course, we have the ocean, which is just still stuff we don't see there, you know. Your whole drawing article you found, one about predictions from, you know, over 100 years ago. Uh, I wonder right. when, the, when we started landing on the moon and all that, if... You, if they did the same thing with from that time period to now, what the predictions were, and how much uh, I'm sure there was a lot of thought about moon bases and people actually living on the moon, it would be fascinating to see that. It's, it's kind of bizarre we haven't been back to the moon. You know, that's a whole other topic I think for another show, obviously. But I don't know. The moon's such a mystery. I guess that's what I'm saying. And, but I do think this telescope idea is pretty damn cool. If we ever get it, but of course, we're not going to have access to it. You'll have to be, you know, an engineer. I'm not, or, uh, I'm not yeah, well, so not. we haven't went back to the moon. That's my personal thought. Let's just say we have gone. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think I'm not told. I'm totally not sold on the idea that we haven't gone back. Oh, I got you. So there might that. actually be a base or something on there. Uh, oh, what I'm I saying is, they may like, not tell us yeah. about stuff. Like I'm not oh, a big of I, I, I'm a big believer. They don't always tell us everything. So. Oh, I believe that too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Problem is, you never you never know what's the truth, even if it is the truth. <laughs> you know, it's like I don't know anymore what's going on. But yeah, I, I could see that something being up there for sure. There's so much shit in space too. Like we have it's, just, of, it's the same idea as Area 51. Like. Yeah. For, yeah. There you go. Yep. Decade, yep. For decades, it was a mystery. It was like, is that place really? Yeah. Exist? 
And then it came out yeah. that it does. And so right. I'm saying, like, us going back to the moon, and they'd be like, oh, we haven't gone back, we haven't gone back. And then, actually, you know, we got a moon base that's, like, functioning, and it looks like it's been there right. for years. Who knows? Right. I'm just saying, like, I'm not totally sold on the idea that, that we haven't gone back. Even, even if it's the info's from our own country, other countries can go to space. I mean, not all of them, but... Russia, for mm-hmm. instance, they definitely can go to space. I don't think we have a worldwide organization that tells people, like, you can't go to space, you can't do this. So who's who's not to say uh, the other countries have already made things on the moon that we don't know of, you know? Especially the dark side of the moon where you can't see, unless it's, like, a satellite or something. But well, there was a guy that created a rocket or something, wasn't that, is that a true story? Uh-huh. This guy was creating his own shot, rocket and, his, and, the, and the government tried to shut him down. Maybe. Uh, Damn, what movie was that? Oh, the movie? It was a movie. I don't know Hmm. if it's fiction or not, but I'm saying, like, my thought, like, there there has to be some kind of restriction, probably. Or just don't tell anybody. Just go to the freaking room. (laughs) If you feel you're smart enough. (laughs) 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 Make your own What what do you think, uh, what do you think, Dave, about this whole moon mystery stuff? I don't know. I, I, I gotta think it's probably just like this, the side that we see, just dark. You know, maybe I'm just not really all that... I I just can't... I really just can't see there being too much different. You know? Right. I mean... You don't don't think maybe people have constructed things up there or anything like that? I don't know. They might have, I guess. You know, it's kind of like... I look at it like my garage, right? You know, the front of it. Because we've got a detached garage, so the front of it... Yeah. You know, it's... You know, we kind of keep it generally, you know, pretty clutter-free. But if you go around yeah. the back, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's a bunch of shit right. growing back there. You know, just totally unkempt. <laughs> maybe that's what it, maybe planet. that what the moon would look like. You just go there back go. there, and the weeds are totally out of control. Planet <laughs> <laughs> light, got an atmosphere. You're like, what's going on? This is weird. <laughs> like, what the? What the hell? Oh. You gotta you get a weed. Something. You go up there with a weed whacker, <laughs> and you don't have to pick it up because it just it just floats away. So right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Floats into the cosmos, and you piss off some aliens because you litter on their property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to your article, Juan, about you know like you know a hundred years ago. Or so have you guys ever seen the movie A Trip to the Moon? Never it was heard made of. in nineteen oh two. Yeah, it was made in nineteen oh two. It is trippy as hell. It basically, and it was kind of, it had a huge vision behind it, but not exactly, uh, I don't think physics were ever addressed in it, but go watch it. There's a colored and a black and white version on Netflix, maybe, uh, but you should definitely check it out. A Trip to the Moon. A Trip to the Moon. It's 1902. That's the movie when it came out. They, They all line up, get into this rocket, and it just, like, Blasts off to the moon. The moon's got a face. It just craters itself into one of the eyeballs of the face, and then they get out, and then they they uh, they uh, mingle with like the alien culture. It's so bizarre, but it and it's silent too. I think it's, there's no no audio, but it's one of the huh. first movies, obviously made. But you should check it out. It's everyone out there listening. Check that movie out. I mean, obviously oh. it's very fictitious of the moon. Great topics today. This was really fun. My mind is now tired of all of the uh, info it has uh, absorbed. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. it's crazy, man. It's crazy. But anything else before we leave, guys? Want to tell anybody? Or I, share? I just want to say, everybody out there listening, I hope you're safe and healthy and same for your friends and family and, and everyone else. You know, just protect yourself, be smart. All that good stuff. Well put, my Excellent. friend. I don't think we can talk that, can we? Uh, no, I just kind of, I'm just looking to forward to when this all kind of gets back to normal and I get back to yeah. kissing strangers on the mouth. <laughs> hey, but I don't know, but I think we're going to enter into a new norm, to be honest with you. I'm not so? kissing like, strangers on the mouth? Well, we'll see. <laughs> Is that, well, that I, is, I, I, have, I have two hobbies. Kissing <laughs> strangers and prostitutes on the mouth. 
Oh, that's nice. That's a good combination. <laughs> Both don't seem to like it very much. Well, and, and Doctor appointment in a motel. <laughs> Call no. And they're always like, "Is that a fruity garlic smell in your breath?" What's going oh, on? Oh shit! Yeah. shit. <laughs> oh no, Dave, come back, Dave! No, no, <laughs> you love <laughs> stuff. That will snap. No, I was thinking like, what is the social norm going to be? People don't want to shake hands anymore. You know, like it's going to be, we're going to be different coming out of this. Hey, Vulcan, like, the we can world do Vulcan will be salutes, different. or we can bow. We can bow to people. Vulcan, Vulcan salute. I or, like the uh, bowing idea. I don't know how often yeah. I'll bow, but uh, right, I mean, especially if you're back hurt. So that's going to be. Yeah, what if your back hurts? Is that is that shown as disrespectful if that becomes the norm to bow to people? Like, how do you? Uh, like, oh, that's awkward, my back. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, my back, man. Just uh, just take this salute, but I appreciate you bowing. <laughs> no, I'm serious. You know, you know what? Just people, uh, I don't what? think are just gonna jump right out there and and just go out there and like be quick to socialize again in like bars and right. and the restaurants and stuff. I just think people are gonna be very keep to themselves. Yeah. I can see it picking up. Even though they may uh, want to be social. Either way. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Maybe we can all, like, knight people. You know, that, that we all have swords and we just, like, touch <laughs> the shoulders of people, you know? That's kind of I a sign of respect. So. Yeah, I don't know. There's, there's creative ways to to greet people, I guess. I mean, or you just all go around in giant hamster balls. Yeah, yeah they'd be like, there you go. I knight you, <laughs> sir, buffalo wings. <laughs> oh shit! Sir, Taco Bell. Right. Well, Demolition Man, man, that was the uh, that was the only restaurant remaining, Taco Bell. So there you go. Oh yeah. They have breakfast now. The restaurant welcome. wars, man. Restaurant wars. <laughs> I wanted, I wanted this. I wanted that story. Let's restaurant. Like did just oh, like Ronald McDonald just go crazy with a machine gun and then Burger King came out with a cannon and. That's another thing this thing will bring is good material. A lot of people will start making more movies about this time, and they'll amp it up. So thanks, guys, for coming on and all that. And this was a great show, so I'm excited to get it out. So, oh, yeah. Excellent. It was good. Excellent. Well, with that said, yeah. I'm Josh. I'm Juan. And I'm Dave. See you later. Yeah. <laughs>